Hi drummers, hope you're well right. How to play fast hi-hat in drum grooves. This could be the question that I get asked the most in the whole world. So at least once a day, I would say by direct message or email, somebody messages me to say, I'm playing a groove and I need to go faster. How do I do it? Well, I'm gonna give you the short answer and the truest answer first. You practice until your hand falls off. I can't stress that enough. All of this stuff, all this technique talk I'm about to go into is nonsense and, and irrelevant unless you're practicing it on a daily basis. That doesn't have to mean sitting on a drum kit the entire time. That's a good idea to do some of the time. But the rest of the time, on a pad, on a tabletop, on a book, on a pillow, on your shoe, in midair, massively underrated practice technique, just get a stick in your hand and get doing it, man. So the, the biggest thing of all that will help you is simply taking the decision to truly engage with this thing. And it doesn't have to be hours and hours a day, but at some point in the day, have the stick in your hand and make these movements, man. That's, that's the big thing by far. The two main technique options, I would say, for going quick on a hi-hat, playing a groove, are the molar style whipping stroke and finger control, right? So this. And this. Basically, the two main options of playing a repeating pattern of notes, which you're doing on a hi-hat in a groove. I'll demonstrate these and talk them through on the pad, and then I'll play them on the kit as well. Let's do the molar thing first. Now, the advantage of the molar technique is, as you can hear, it gives you a nice accent every other note. So with the molar style whipping stroke, you basically get loud note, quiet note, loud note, quiet note. For a lot of grooves, that sounds great. Uh, sometimes it doesn't fit. So that really what this comes down to is a musical decision about what am I playing and is this going to, um, is, is it going to be appropriate for the music that I'm, that I'm playing? Here's the molar whipping stroke. It goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Say so that we're playing eighth notes here on the and, the last one on the bar, imaginary bit of string tied around your wrist gets pulled up and on the way up, you strike the drum or the hi-hat, tip of your stick and your elbow are heavy. They're behaving like they're heavy objects just hanging down. Then from your elbow, nice big flick, a whipping motion, a wave that goes down your arm but to give you the loud note. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one so when you come up the wrist is being pulled up like you're a marionette remember a bit of string tied around your wrist pulling it up you tap on the way up you're in this position halfway after the first note from your elbow big flick that sense of throwing of releasing of letting go of uh, cracking a whip so and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one get on the pad practice it practice it practice it practice it you got to just repeat that motion get it ingrained have it become part of your playing what you're doing when you're practicing on a practice pad is you're rehearsing the motions that you need for music so that they become second nature then when you're on stage when you're when you're under the lights playing when they're in the, when you're in the recording studio and the red lights on you're ready you can trust your hand to play that hi hat quick enough one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one so if you're playing eighth notes obviously you get the accent on the quarter note one and two and three and four and if you're playing 16th for example you get the accent on the eighth note one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one if you're playing triplets then a good way to do it is to go one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet so you get the accent on the beat and then you get two hits for the upstroke i'll demonstrate that now one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet so it works just fine in triplets as well it's just that you have two hits which you make as the upstroke one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet so that's the molar style whipping stroke absolutely massive obviously it, it its main advantage is it gives you emphasis it gives you pulse it gives you a sense of momentum it gives you some forward drive some forward momentum in the groove, which is brilliant. Um, the disadvantage, well, you're kind of stuck with that accent, right? So no matter how uh, lightly you try and play it, it's always gonna be more accented. That's kind of the point. Anyway, I'll have, I'll have a play. Here it comes with some eighth note feel. 
So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and typically, it doesn't have to be, but typically you'd be hitting the edge of the hi-hat with the shaft of the stick, this bit here, on the downstroke and the tip of the stick on top of the hi-hat on the upstroke. Typically. Here comes some groove. Play a bit faster. Cool, so that's the idea. You can do it with the back of your hand facing up, so-called German or Germanic hand position. You can do it, and I quite like this actually, to do it, you can do it with your thumb on top, so-called French or timpani hand position. So imaginary bit of string around your wrist in each case. Uh, think of how it would work, man. If you were a marionette puppet, if you had that little loop on the German, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. On the French, one, and two, and three, and four, and basically the same thing, just your hand orientated in a slightly different position. Thumb on top for French, uh, German or Germanic back of the hand on top. Basically the same thing. Cool, and that's the molar style whipping stroke. I'll just play it in the 16th note feel and triplet feel as well. 16th note feel, if we're gonna accent every eighth note, I'll do it now, kind of my preferred way with the thumb on top. And some triplet feel. I'll do it a German first, back of the hand facing up. Now French with the thumb facing up. Can't stress enough that neither of those hand positions is like better in any way. I slightly prefer the thumb on top, like especially in that hi-hat position personally, but uh, yeah, whatever, it gives you a bit of a different feel with each of the two positions as well. So by all means, like audition them. If you're playing a tune, like audition the two different hand positions and see which, see which works. That's a good way of doing it. Uh, that's kind of it for the molar stroke, man. So accenting on the beat or at least every other note with triplets, it goes down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. But that's kind of it. Get on the pad, get on the pillow, get on the cushion, do it in midair. Uh, just drill it and drill it and drill it and drill it until your hand can do it. Um, people often, we often do this, obviously do this loads and loads in sessions, face-to-face -face sessions that I teach. So often people will come back the next week and say, it's just not feeling comfortable yet. It's been one week. Like it, this is a long-term thing. Stick with it, persevere. Genius is just perseverance in disguise. Drill it get to know it, work with it, and uh, the whole idea here is to assimilate it. It'll become your, your second nature, and then it's a really lovely thing to have. Uh, it's probably the, one of the main things, I think, that makes a drummer sound pro, makes a drummer sound smooth, in my opinion, is that, that ability to sort of really nail that whipping stroke as part of your groove. So that's one option, the molar technique. The second option is to use finger control. Now, this gives you a totally different feel. This is where you're going to have the notes pretty much even. They're all going to be the same level, right? Obviously, there are certain styles of music, just certain songs where this will work great. The big idea here is you're going to throw the stick down for the first note of all, just like you would do for any other hit, like just using your wrist, normal hit. As you strike, you're going to let it bounce up, right? So, 
your fulcrum there at the front between your finger and your thumb, that works like a hinge. Once the stick has bounced up that very first time, you then use your fingers at the back of your grip, so your middle finger, ring finger and little finger to give the stick a little push each time basically. At the top of its little bounce each time, stick rebounds off the drum. At the top of the run, about 45 degrees or so, you're going to give it a little push and it'll bounce up again. Like this. I'll, I'll come and do it up close. Each time, your fingers give it a little push. Remember, the first one of all will have to be from your wrist to get it started. After that, you're saving your wrist. You're just using your fingers. And this saves so much effort, man. So much sort of less energy needed to, it, to be put in in the first place by you. You're working with the natural bounce of the stick and just giving it a little push each time to, to commence the next stroke, right? Again, practice it on a pad, go crazy, man. Practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it um, on a book, on a tabletop. I do this on my shoe all the time, right? Like, live with it, love it, cultivate it. Me explaining this once is not going to mean that you're magically able to do it. Now it's it's like, it's you know, like the great Dom Familari always says, it's your move. So this is my move, right? And after watching this video, it's now your move. You go and work on that and cultivate it, live with it, love it, nurture it and uh, you'll get that going. I'll play it in some grooves. Let's play a 16th note groove. Typically, you'd play this with the tip of the stick on top of the hi-hat, I guess. Um, you could play it with the neck of the stick the shaft of the stick on the edge. Certainly harder to get the, the bounce there, I'd say, just the stick just bounces less off the edge. Um, just like before, you can do it with your thumb on top, which I quite like to do, the French hand position. You can do it with the back of your hand facing up, the German hand position. The grip is the same, just your hand is rotated uh, differently. You can also do it in between. Uh, this goes for the molar as well, didn't mention this, but the so-called American hand position is anything in between. So French is thumb on top, German is back of the hand on top, and American so-called is anywhere sort of in between. I like personally to do this in the French hand position. I always found it allowed the stick to bounce up nice and straight, which I always found quite helpful. So one time again, 16th notes. Uh, I'll do it as eighth notes. And triplets. And as you can hear, you get a totally different vibe there. You get very even uh, notes. Now, here's the thing. like We're thinking of these as two extremes, right? As if it was a, a choice, a dichotomy. And when you're practicing, uh, especially when you're practicing on a pad in that kind of pure way, just like I was describing before, like teaching your hand to do it automatically, I think that's absolutely fine to think of it as two separate things. In the real world of being a musician, all of this technique talk disappears as far as I'm concerned. I'm not, not interested in this sort of talk at all. When I'm on stage playing under the lights again in the recording studio, none of these thoughts sort of hit my head at all personally. I'm just not interested at all in that thing, in, in the technique side of it then, because then it's all about the music. You're playing music. You're a musician at that point. You've done the work on technique. Now it's your chance to, to play. In the real world of playing, I would say you often end up using a combination of these things. I would say I definitely end up using more molar type stuff personally than I do uh, finger control on the hi-hat but there are definitely times when I bring in finger control definitely times and um, yeah often it's a combination of it and, and that really comes from practicing these two techniques loads and loads and loads on your pad on your pillow on your tabletop on your shoe on your whatever and also when you kit and also just from playing loads and loads of those as well so all of this stuff all this bedroom practice is fine but then you've got to go and play some music as well because that's where you really truly hone like the combination of these techniques and where you're going to use them all just instinctively get a feel for how you how you play uh, grooves of different sorts so very often if i'm playing a groove i don't know 16th note groove
if I'm honest, I'm kind of using a combination. It's more towards the molar end of things, but I'm definitely using my fingers underneath to help out. And that's kind of because I've just, yeah, worked to the point uh, where both of those are instinctive. And that's what it's all about, man, holding those two things. So remember, practice, pad, practice, absolutely huge. On the kit is great. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, it's brilliant practice. But people often say, and I, I heard this so many times, it's just ridiculous. People say, I couldn't do any practice this kit because my kit, because I'm, decorating because my kit's away or I'm my kit's in the cupboard or like I went on holiday couldn't do any practice nonsense man like drums are the original like thing you can practice anywhere if you've got a practice pad great if not on your knee on your shoe on a book can't stress it enough times there's no reason to not practice drums man so first technique molar let's do it as eighth notes molar whipping motion one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and You can drill it and drill it. The great Dom Famularo, um, he often uh, does drills where he'll do right stick, left stick, and both together, which is a brilliant, brilliant thing to do. The other side of it is finger control, where you're going to play evenly using your fingers underneath the stick in this way to push it along. Uh, Remember, you can do each of these in the Germanic or German hand position with the back of your hand up, the French hand position with your thumb on top, or even the American, somewhere in between. My personal preference for both is pretty much to use the thumb on top, but I'm not saying that's better. That's absolutely not better. Try them, and I do definitely use German sometimes as well, uh, just depending on how it feels. That's ultimately your guide, is like how the music feels, right? So finger control. Of course, practice it with both sticks in this, in this groove sense you're going to be doing it with your lead stick of course but of course practice it with both sticks and they are the main two techniques man hopefully that's helpful that's certainly my perspective on it uh there's nothing there that i'm not saying about playing hi-hat fast number one you practice it like crazy uh till your hand falls off and number two you choose and work on both of those two techniques and then when you're playing music to some extent you choose which one you're going to use uh primarily molus type uh, whipping stroke or finger control, they're the two, man. Hope that makes a bit of sense. Thanks so much for watching. As always, any questions about that or anything else, give us a shout. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. If you do subscribe and you want to get a notification every time I upload a video, which is pretty much every day at the minute, uh, please click the little bell icon. Thanks to all the lovely people who've supported this channel by, well, two ways, actually. One, by buying me a coffee, so to speak, a virtual coffee via my Buy Me A Coffee page, which is below. Today's amazing uh, support is Pat... Uh, Pat Feedy, thanks Pat, really appreciate it, no end man. Uh, also, you can become a member, a monthly member of the Mike Barnes Drums channel. What happens then is you get drum support from me, so if you've got questions, I'll record you video responses uh, to get back to answer your questions personally. I'll also prioritize all the members, uh, the questions I'm doing my emails each day, people email me a ton of questions. Um, I'll prioritize those, I'll do those first. Obviously, I try and answer everyone's questions, that's always my mission, but the members always attend to their questions first. You get members only video once a week, and you get oh all my playlists for YouTube laid out in a really nice like clean format hand technique foot technique blah 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 all that stuff and also I mean I have to say you'd be supporting this channel which would be absolutely massive uh, the more support the channel gets needless to say the more content I'll be able to put up the more useful I'll be able to make it I hope the more I'll be able to do the things that you want to see on this channel so that supporting this channel is something that I can't stress enough how much I appreciate it um, so that's that and please follow Mike Barnes Drums on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And uh, I'm also doing um, uh, so Skype lessons and Zoom lessons. So if, there's a few spaces if anyone's into uh, online lessons. Uh, check the details of that out below in the description as well. And that's it for now, I think. Uh, have fun playing fast hi-hat. Hope that answers some of your questions. Give us your feedback. See you soon.